It's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. It's the beginning of a new year, so happy new year to everyone out there. I also thought it might be a good time of year to do some shopping, since maybe a lot of you got some gift money over the holidays. Today I thought I'd focus on mixing consoles, since that's one of the main things that this channel is known for already. But in the future I may do some other shopping videos, so if you like that kind of content, go ahead and like this video and leave a comment. And if you like it, I'll make more videos like this. Okay, I'm going to start with the search term recording consoles and see what we get. First of all, I see an AMEC Big. This is a 28 channel AMEC Big inline recording mixing console, 1993 to 2000, black in color. And it does look to be in pretty good condition. These have good EQ, and I actually have used one of these before. I mean, it was about, I don't know, 28 years ago now, most likely. But I remember it sounding pretty good. I do remember that the Super True automation and the dynamics on these require a Windows 95 PC. So that's a whole lot of fun to have to mess with a Windows 95 PC to use your analog console. But he does say in the description down here that it can be used without the super true uh, but if you wanted to use it you have to buy the computer for that because he does not have it so uh, it may sound awesome it's really heavy though here's something you don't see on reverb all the time this is an op amp lab 12 channel custom recording console white with red fader caps on here this thing's pretty cool it's almost thirty thousand dollars though let's take a look at this uh, yeah, it's big. It's got a nice deep chassis. Probably weighs a ton. Cool looking light up switches. Which he does say in the description that was an addition or a modification to the console. Got two band EQ. Eight subgroups. 48 volt and on and off on lighted switches. Op amp labs. Op amps and UTC transformers and has a dual mix bus option 68 Melkor slash RCA and Opimp Labs upgraded transformers and aviation press light switches for 48 volt mute has four balance sends and returns eight transformer balanced buses with vintage UTC transformers Two parallel mix buses feed ADC repeat coil and UTC output transformers and are independently trimmable via a panel on the back. So it was used on St. Vincent's Grammy Award winning Daddy's Home. So that's pretty cool. It's got some provenance. Oh, it's also been terminated DB25 and supposedly is plug and play with full patch bay, cabling, delivery available for Los Angeles buyers at an additional cost, of course. But still, that's a pretty cool vintage console. I mean, I'm not going to go and spend $30,000 on something like that. Feature-wise, it seems a little bit limited for my workflow. But for somebody that wants a good front end, that'd probably be a really great sounding console if you want to spend nearly $30,000 for it. And here we go. This is the famous Yamaha PM2000 analog discrete preamp 24 by 8 recording mixing console. This was not originally designed for recording. The PM2000 was designed for sound reinforcement. But a lot of people have used these successfully in studios. There are lots of modifications and a lot of a lot of people have done a lot of cool stuff with these. So they're they're neat consoles with discrete transformer balance preamps based around API 2520 Jensen 990 style op amps. They're the Yamaha ones, which were kind of a copy of the API 2520. The best value in analog front end or summing mixer for DAW recording. Yamaha PM2000 24 channel 8 bus console with discrete transformer balance preamps based around API 2520 Jensen 990 style op amps. They're the Yamaha clones of that, basically. Discrete transformer balanced output amps on every bus and insert discrete op amps can be stopped with other 990 style op amps. That's pretty cool. These things can be modified and you can do a lot of stuff with them. They're not originally designed for recording, but this is definitely, you know, one of the best options if you want a tank 
and you want your back to hurt really bad when you're moving it and it's going to cost you seven thousand dollars should you want one of these there's another 44 channel amec big here for seven thousand dollars yeah that's a, a big one all right and it looks like that one does have the automation computer for the super true automation looks pretty clean power supply there's the computer so it does have the computer which is a PP e vision scout interesting runs Windows 95 like I said before when I was looking at the other one these need a Windows 95 computer big by Langley so yeah it's all there that's not bad seven thousand dollars since it's got the computer it's obviously functional not a terrible deal considering that the prices on analog mixing consoles have been going up recently after going down for many many years I think that's a reasonable deal in 2024 since it does have the computer and apparently is in perfect working condition I'm not personally going to spend $7,000 on an AMEC BIG, but this one at least is all there. Manual schematics, documents, including software and OS, everything's there, and it is, you know, he says, in perfect working condition, so not, not too bad for that. And next we have a Sony MPX3036 recording console from 1986. This thing's really cool. They made, I think, at least three different styles of EQs for this. And this one looks like it has several of the EQ options. These are huge, built like tanks. They sound really good. A good friend of mine has one of these in his studio and he loves it. I think he's done some modifications or put some different mic preamps in his. So these are pretty modifiable and they had a lot of options including all the different EQ options. It's a 36 channel modular split inline recording console. I thought those were two different types or two different layouts for a recording console but apparently this one is a split inline console. I'm not sure what that means. It has 24 individual track assignment buses, six sends, four returns, high and low pass filters, with variable frequency control on the high pass filters, eight John Hardy MPC 3000 preamps, 28 Sony transformerless preamps along with spares, four different EQs swappable, fixed Q16 with spares, inductor four, 10 band six API 560 style, parametric, there are 10 of those with spares. I don't like the way he put the numbers of these modules in different places like that. That makes it confusing. This is an early version with the MCI and Sony stamp because, of course, Sony bought out MCI in 1982, 83, something like that. And this board was originally purchased by Paul Alva of Microsoft in 1986. Very cool. But it's $15,000. Hmm. $15,000. Yeah. Or $1 under $15,000. That's supposed to make the price a little easier to take, I guess, that it's 14999 instead of 15000 And here we have an AMEC Angela, 36 input, 24 bus recording console. We've only got three pictures of this one on here. Looks like it's in pretty decent condition, except what was right here. More patch paste. Did they have some outboard gear racked here? It took it out? No, no, no. I like how he says leather armrest is not torn with an exclamation point. That's an excellent feature. The armrest isn't even torn on this AMEC Angela, guys. You should definitely go buy this for $6,000. The armrest is intact. He does say he has the full schematics and user instructions from AMEC. The connectors are all XLR, TS to machines and monitors, or Elko multi-pin to the mic breakout box. And to the included power supplies, which are included, included, mic breakout box included, and to the power supplies also included. The cables included that go from the patch bay to the racks have various connectors depending upon the outboard device. That's not bad. Not bad for $6,000, I don't suppose. Of course, anything like this, you know, you really want to check it out because even one that's in really good working condition at the time, you're going to have to spend money on it. It's an analog console. They're going to need work. At the very least, they're going to need cleaning. 
and they're going to need periodic service. So, you know, just because you get a good deal on an analog console doesn't mean you're out of the woods, so to speak. And here is something very interesting. We have a Harrison Series A 3232, non-functioning for $5,000. I mean, that's a cool console. Pretty sure this is, you know, got transformers and good old school components in it and stuff. But he does say, I think in here in the description is not working. It is complete. But for $5,000, I mean, that's not a terrible deal. I'm sure the parts in it are worth that much if you sold out everything. But if you want to buy this and restore it, you're going to spend double that to get this thing actually functional. Maybe even more than that. It looks decent, but it's really dirty. He says, this is one of the first consoles Dave Harrison made. Very historic. If it's historic, why has it been sitting in storage for years? That's what I want to know. And it's kind of dirty. But I mean, these are supposed to be great consoles. He also goes on to say that it is a different from the Series C. Electrically different, electronically the same. A Series A module will not work in a C desk or C power supply. It is complete. It can arrange shipping. But this electrically different, electronically the same. So what he's saying there, I think, is that it uses a different power scheme to power the modules, but electronically, the way it's designed is the same. I'm not really sure what he means, but at least he made note of it in the description. And yeah, that, that needs some pretty serious cleaning, for one thing. And after it's clean, who knows what all could be wrong with that. And that's probably decent, but historic console, been sitting in storage for years. Another interesting console, the Tascam M35. I've featured an M35 in quite a few videos here on the channel. In fact, I still have it here in the studio. And these are cool. They have transformer balance mic preamps. And this one has a recapped power supply. That's really cool. Let's see, the power supply is actually in this far right module on the console. If you go back and look at some of the videos I made with my M35, you can see that. I think I pulled the power supply module out in one of the videos. I know I pulled some of the other modules out in one of the videos, but that power supply is internal to the console, even though it's modular and this module here pulls out. Let's see, the condition of this one looks to be pretty good. It's got all the faders. Mine's actually missing one, one fader cap, so this one's in pretty good condition overall. I'm not sure if the recapped power supply justifies the price premium on this one because normally you'll see M35 somewhere between $400 and $750, not $1350. So I don't know if that almost double cost is really justified by the recapped power supply. It's not a huge power supply. Uh, it doesn't seem like it would cost all that much to recap the power supply on one of these. Now here we have a Quad 8 1970s frame. This looks really cool. It's even orange, which I really like orange things. But it's missing, I'm guessing all of the active components in this are missing. You've got some switching and some things left here. But it looks like anything that was actually worth a lot of money was removed from this and probably racked up though it does have the big desk rack thing here built into it that's that's pretty awesome you don't see that anymore where they're actually built into a piece of furniture and quad eight got the vu meters and everything and they're only asking two thousand dollars which that's not bad for the frame and all the parts and everything but i'd want to know exactly what is under all these switches and everything are these just all the passive components is that all that's left is passive switches and uh, potentiometers or is there anything functional in this at all other than obviously you've got some VU meters and what is this over here too I don't know what that is let's see do you zoom back in it's got a really cool cabinet here next to it it's super vintage looking that's a really cool console 2000 doesn't seem like that bad of a deal, but could you ever find the modules or anything to restore this, or would you just have to build something completely custom out of it? And if you're going to do that, what's the purpose of having the leftover parts? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the, what the deal with that, but it's just cool. It's just cool to look at. That would be some project to try and find the modules to put this back together. 
but it is a really cool looking vintage console. And here we have a Fostex Model 450 for $750. That's quite a bit for one of these. I mean, I do like the 450. I think they're really cool little consoles. They have individually switchable fan and power on every channel. And the EQ's reasonably extensive for one of these. This one's got a melted switch, too. Let's blow this up if we can look at this better. Oh, yeah. Melted switch. And it's reasonably clean. These are pretty reliable little consoles. They sound pretty decent. This one does have all its original faders, which these are weird plastic faders. They have like a little spade that sticks down into the fader track. So they're completely different from any other faders I've ever seen. But overall, the construction of this one, it doesn't seem like it's that solid, but the one I had sat in a pawn shop for 10 years was made in the mid 80s and it still works 100%. I've made a series of videos about the Fostex Model 450, so if you're curious about this mixer or you find one for less than $750 and you want it, go check out some of my Fostex 450 videos. I'm going to take a look at one more before I end this video, even though there's a whole lot more consoles on Reverb I could go through in this video, but we have a vintage 1982 Soundcraft 2400, 24 channel Soundcraft console with what looks like a piece of plywood in the middle of it. I'm not sure what that is, because in some of the other photographs you don't see it. I guess he just had it there for a place to put a mouse or a keyboard or something. Anyway, this looks like it's in pretty decent condition. This is a, you know, quite a bit older than my Soundcraft Sapphire, but I have heard and read good things about this 2400 series, that this is a, a really good sounding console. This one physically appears to be in good shape. Let's see what he says about it down here. Not a lot of detail. Some channel improvements, modifications done over the years, nothing specific there. In good condition, has more spare channels, 24 channels and the size dimensions and stuff. 4,500. Not a terrible price. I just wish there was a little bit more information in the description, although he does have some pretty extensive photographs. So that's a pretty cool console. And that's not a terrible, terrible price these days, since analog console prices have been going up recently instead of down like they were doing for a number of years. I was going to end the video with the Soundcraft 2400. But then I came across the Tascam M35, another one, and this one they only want $425. And this one has the original manual, which is cool, but apparently no rebuilt power supply. So, you know, it's less than half as much money as the one with the rebuilt power supply. Everything is functioning except for some finicky VU meter lights. These M35s are extremely reliable. Most of the time when you find these, they work just fine. They may be a little bit noisy, especially on the monitoring side, like the tape return channels. They're kind of noisy, but they're not bad and they usually work. They're built like tanks. So, you know, but 450 or 425, that's a little bit better of a price than 1350 for just a rebuilt power supply being the only difference between the two. Oh, this one does have the talkback module though, which the other one did not have. So no rebuilt power supply with this one, but you get an extra module and you still get that Tascam sound that everybody craves. Last one I'm going to look at today is the Soundcraft Spirit Studio 1608 Vintage Recording Console Mixer. I don't know about vintage. This is probably early 90s manufacturer, so it's not that old. $500, not a terrible price, even though this is just a 16 channel 8 bus console. I like these. I've tested the live, the Spirit Live version here on the channel and I thought it sounded really, really good. So the Spirit Studio is probably excellent and everything I've ever heard about these is pretty good. A lot of people say they like the Spirit Studios better than they like the Soundcraft Ghosts. So these are a decent option and 500 is not terrible. Maybe you could get it for a little less than that. And again, like I said at the beginning of the video, if it's something you've got to go pick up, take a look at where it's listed. In this case, it's in Portland, Oregon. So um, it does have the power supply here. Kind of a smallish power supply, but it is only a 16-channel Soundcraft console. So not, not too bad. Looks like it's in decent condition. 
these are good sounding consoles all the jacks being on the top same as like the Mackie 8 bus or the Soundcraft Ghost that can be a problem with dust getting into the jacks but not if you have all your stuff plugged into them so should be okay right that was a lot of fun there are a couple things to remember when you're shopping for something like a mixing console online and number one is the condition so hopefully there's a detailed description of everything that functions or doesn't function as well as a lot of detailed photographs so you can properly evaluate the condition of the mixing console the other thing to remember is the location of the console and the size of the console may factor into the purchase price and the difficulty of acquiring such a thing from a marketplace like Reverb. So make sure to take note of the location and if it's somewhere it's reasonable for you to get to or the seller agrees to meet you, that's a good thing. Otherwise, you know, you might want to stick with things that are a little bit smaller and can be shipped without breaking the bank. Of course, shopping on Reverb and reading the descriptions about things like mixing consoles can also be a good way to learn more about individual models and makes of mixing consoles that you might be interested in. So it's not always with the intention to buy that I browse these listings. I hope everyone has an excellent new year as well as an awesome day, night, evening, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having, including a new year. Have a good one. And thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.